We're here today to talk about three steps to confidently express yourself at work. First, a little quiz. Guess how much more money you can earn by taking your English from a beginner level to an advanced level. How much more money can you earn every year? Write the answer in the chat that you think, 5%, 17%, or 31%. Let's see, I'm seeing a lot of 31%, uh, got a 17 in there. Yeah, the answer is 31%, just a lot. And you know, if you're already intermediate, which many of you are, going from intermediate to advanced is at 17%, which is still quite a bit. And uh, if you're not good at sort of visualizing these numbers, um, you know, if you made a salary of $30,000 a year, an extra 17% is $5,150 more dollars a year, which is quite a bit. I can think of a lot of things I could do with 5,000 extra dollars a year. So English is powerful, but where do you focus your time? Should you focus on speaking, writing, listening, vocabulary? Well, let's play a little game to find out. So first, can you guys understand me? Write yes in the chat or no, raise your hand, yes. And can you understand me right now? And it looks like a lot of people are saying yes, great, wonderful, yeah. Now, look at this paragraph. Does this paragraph make sense? Is it completely clear? Write yes in the chat or say no. Writing resumes isn't in my wheelhouse, but run it by Jen, it's right up her alley. Yeah, that's a tricky one, right? And I'm getting a lot of no's, maybe one yes here, you get the context. And it, it makes sense because this is confusing. We've got some weird expressions like in my wheelhouse, I'm gonna run something by, an alley. So I go to someone's alley and I bring my resume there. That <laughs> doesn't make sense. But what about this paragraph? I'm not good at writing resumes. You should ask Jen for help. She is good at that. Does that one make more sense? Like getting a lot more yeses this time. And so you might have guessed that these two paragraphs mean the exact same thing. I'm in my wheelhouse is just a fancy way of saying, you know, hey, I'm really good at this. Run it by means you're asking someone for advice or approval. And if something is up your alley, it means that you are also good at it or you're interested in it. And so the big difference between these two paragraphs, and if you understood me earlier, is vocabulary. Vocabulary is the difference. A bigger vocabulary will help you unlock new job opportunities because you're able to confidently express yourself in a job interview and talk about your strengths. You'll also unlock new relationships, both at work and in your personal life, because now you can actually show your personality. You have a great personality, you're a great person, but if you have a small vocabulary, it's hard to really show that to people. Of course, a bigger vocabulary, like you talked about earlier, will also mean more money in your life, which is always a nice thing. Now, this all sounds great, but we know it's not that easy, right? And I personally know from experience how painful that this can be. Four years ago, I first started trying to learn Spanish. I have a few Spanish speakers in my family, and I live in Chicago, where we have a large Spanish-speaking community. So it was important to me to learn this language to try to build better relationships with the people around me. But I had three big problems. One was that I thought vocabulary was boring and studying it was difficult and there are just too many words to try to know. I also thought, you know, hey, I, I already know some words, but I can never remember them in conversations. It's like they're bouncing around in my head but when I need them, I can't actually pull them into my mouth, right? It's, it's like there's this disconnect. And then I was also just too embarrassed to try to use new expressions because I didn't want to make mistakes. And so I, I'm curious from you guys, which one of these 
do you also have problems with right now when you think about your vocabulary? Write the number that you most kind of feel the same way. Or if you feel more than one, you can say all of them, like Leticia. Yeah. Two, three, one, two, three, two, big time. Yep. Two and three. Mm hmm. Yeah, for sure. Seeing a lot of a lot of all of them. And especially number three. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm very much an introvert. You might be surprised about that since I'm giving a class to 100 people right now. <laughs> but it, it does feel painful sometimes, right, to get in front of people and talk and then especially worry about making mistakes. So before we can really take advantage of the three steps that I'm going to teach you, we have to somehow deal with these problems first. So let's look at them one at a time. This problem of vocabulary being boring and there being too many words. Well, what you see in this picture, this was my old vocabulary system. So I had all of these vocab sheets with like Spanish expressions on one side and English on the other. And each sheet had like 40 different words on it. And I would spend like 40 minutes a day trying to memorize these sheets. It was insanely painful, insanely boring, and it didn't even help me that much, right? But why did I feel like I had to do this? Well, if you're like me, you probably feel like your current vocabulary is, is small, right? It's not good enough. It's this little blue dot. And you think of all the other expressions that are out there that you don't know yet. And so you feel bad. And then there's all these words that you understand, but you can't use in a conversation. So you feel even worse from there. The thing is, you don't need all of those words out there. There's a much smaller set. Unless you're planning on doing a lot of medieval architecture work or going on a lot of tours, you don't need words like flying buttress because, I mean, do you guys talk about flying buttresses all the time? Probably not. <laughs> um, but you should work on words like keep it up, which is a great way to encourage someone to continue doing something positive or low hanging fruit, which is a great expression in the business world to talk about tasks that are easy to do and fast, or you're better off spending time working on confusing words like modals, for example. And so once I finally realized that I don't need all of those words, but instead I needed a system to go from the stuff I knew to the stuff I kind of knew, to then include the stuff I kind of know, that's when I realized that this three-step process I'm gonna teach you was going to change my life. And it did. I went from being alone in my office with all those vocab sheets to spending weeks abroad in foreign countries speaking entirely in Spanish the whole time. And again, there's me, the introvert, standing in a crowd of Spanish speakers. Somehow I got the courage to do this. And it's all thanks to this process, right? And you know, I've from there been able to join Spanish language podcasts as well. And so I'm really excited to teach you the same steps today. All right, so the second problem here, if you have this problem where you can never remember words in a conversation, you probably think it's because you have a bad memory. Well, I have good news. You don't have a bad memory. That is not the problem. Hooray. That's right, Nancy. Hooray. Thank God. You don't have a bad memory. Here's what the real problem is. Again, you have this smaller set of words that you know really well. Okay. And then there's stuff that you kind of know. That's the things you understand, but you can't use. And then there's stuff you just learned, maybe an expression like in my wheelhouse from earlier today's in today's conversation. And so the problem isn't your memory. The problem is time. When you're reading or writing, you have lots of time. So you have the ability to look at words you just learned or stuff you kind of know. When you're speaking, you have very little time, right? It's super fast. There's no time to think. And so your brain only has one choice. It's to use the stuff you know really well. 
There's no time for the other stuff. And so the question isn't, how do I get a better memory? The question is, how do I move words from stuff I just learned to kind of know to stuff I know really well? And that's what this three-step system is going to do. Last problem, too embarrassed, don't wanna make mistakes. How do we deal with this? Well, it's very simple. And I want to show you through another example experiment here. Raise your hand or say yes in the chat if you have ever spent more than a full day, 24 hours, thinking about somebody else's mistake. So if you speak Spanish, you speak Russian, you speak Hindi, you speak Arabic, and you were talking to a student of that language and they made mistakes, have you spent more than 24 hours thinking about their mistakes? I got a no way from Leticia, never from Marcela, no from Nancy, never, right? How many of you have spent more than one hour, a full hour thinking about somebody else's mistakes? No, no, never. Oh, we got one, one yes <laughs> from Ileana, but a bunch of other nevers, no's, no way, okay? So this is the lesson, guys. How do you overcome your fear of speaking? Speak, yeah, fear of speaking. See, I just made a mistake there. The world's going to continue. <laughs> How do I overcome my fear of speaking? You just realize people don't care about your mistakes. People only care about themselves. They care about their family. They care about their friends. They care about their jobs. They care about their own mistakes. Unless you're Ileana, she's the one who said, yes, she does care about your mistakes. But outside of Ileana, people are more concerned about their life than about your mistakes. Once you internalize this super simple fact, your entire world opens up because now you can start to have conversations with more people and you can get the best gift of all which is when you're talking to a native speaker and you make a mistake, they might just give you a correction. And corrections, they're not bad, they're not terrible, they're the best way, in my opinion, to learn. Think about a kid learning their native language. They talk and they talk and they talk and they talk. And I don't know, Gretchen, how many more talks I need to throw in there because they, they certainly do talk a lot. <laughs> we, we don't have enough time for you to get enough in there. Yes, we don't have enough time for that. <laughs> Gretchen's the mother of, of two children. Um, and so they, they talk, right? And they make mistakes. And then their parents correct them over and over. So these things are a gift. And remember, people don't care about your mistakes. They only care about their own lives. So you're free to do whatever you want. Okay, so now that we've got the power of English and the power of vocabulary and we've dealt with some of these problems, let's talk about what you're going to learn in today's class. So first we'll look at that three-step process to confidently express yourself at work. Next, I'm going to give you some sample practice routines that you can steal. So these are practice routines. There's one for when you only have 20 minutes, there's one for when you have an hour, and there's one for when you have two hours, and they all use this three-step process. So you don't have to guess at what you should be doing. So that'll be up next. And then at the end of the class, I'm going to share some information about the 30-Day Vocabulary Accelerator. This is a course that's launching soon, and its goal is to help you learn more American English that you need to get a better job. And so for being here on this class today, you will get a special discount for that if you'd like to join. So definitely stay till the end so you can take advantage of that. All right. So what are the three steps to speak more confidently at work? What is this process I've been talking about? Well, it's the same process that's going to help you turn your passive vocab into active vocab. And the answer is collect, use, and get feedback. Collect, use, and get feedback. I'm going to explain these in more detail in just a moment, but the first thing you need to know 
is you need to have all three. You can't just do one, you can't just do two, you need all three of these things for this process to work. Why? Well, if you remember my vocab sheets that I talked about earlier, all I was doing with those was collecting. I just kept adding new words to these lists and memorizing them or trying to, but I never used them. And I definitely never asked for feedback on them. And so my progress looked like this, it stayed flat. I also have a lot of students who tell me that, you know, hey, I write a lot. I do a lot of writing, but that still doesn't help me very much. Well, writing is a great exercise and I'm going to talk about it more in a few minutes. However, if you're only writing using words you already know, and then you never get feedback on it, you're not growing your vocabulary and you're not helping yourself learn if those expressions actually work and make sense. And then don't get me started on feedback. That's the one that I think we all avoid because we're either worried about making mistakes or we just don't know any native speakers to get feedback from. So we're going to talk about how to solve those problems in a few minutes. All right, you guys ready to learn about how to collect, how to actually get this step done right? Got some head nodding, great, good to go. So what's the best way to collect new expressions that are going to help you speak more confidently at work? Well, here's what not to do. A lot of people that tell me, well, I watch a lot of TV shows, I listen to music, I listen to podcasts. These are good and they have their place. I'll tell you where in a moment. But what this is called is passive learning. And what it means is slow growth, if this is where you're trying to collect a lot of your expressions. Why? Well, think about yourself. Imagine yourself on your couch or on your bed, you're watching some TV show. And up, oh, there's a new word, guys. Uh, uh, it, it disappeared. Uh, wait, oh, and there's another new word. Uh, uh oh, it disappeared again. And so this is what happens. You hear all these new words, but you don't have time to think about them. You don't have time to use them. You don't have time to try them, right? And so they just disappear. And so I had a question from uh, Columbia. You know, why are there so many hard to understand expressions in the movies or the news? Well, it's because before you watched that movie, you didn't collect, use, or get feedback on these expressions. And so you just keep seeing all these new words and they keep disappearing, right? So if that's not the right place to do it, where is? Well, in my opinion, there are three types of practice that you need to grow your vocabulary, okay? Passive practice is one of them but there are two other types that we need. This is what happens though, if you only use one type of practice. So you remember from earlier in the class, I had a successful trip to Barcelona in 2019. Well, in 2017, I had a very unsuccessful trip to Spain. This was after I was studying Spanish for about six months and I was doing a bunch of passive practice. I was watching some videos on YouTube. I had my vocab sheets and then I would be using like little uh, language learning apps, you know, things like Duolingo or whatever. And I thought I was doing great because I kept answering all the questions right in my app. And so when we got to Spain, we went to a restaurant the first night. And I walked in, I confidently ordered a table for two, they sat me down, and then the waitress comes up to my table and she says something to me and I just froze. It was like someone poured a bucket of ice water on my head. I had no idea what she said to me. I had no idea how to respond. It was like my worst nightmare had come true. I felt completely just exposed, right? It was terrible. And looking back now, I realized that's because I didn't prepare myself for that conversation. I prepared myself to answer questions in a language app. I prepared myself to use my vocab sheets, but I never prepared myself to actually express and use the vocabulary I needed or to understand the vocabulary she was using. So, 
We need those three types of studying, three ways to study in order to grow our vocabulary. What are they? Well, there's a type for learning new things, a type for practicing what you know, and a type for enjoying what you know. When you want to learn new things, the best type of practice is deliberate practice. This is where instead of ignoring the parts of English that are confusing to you, you spend a bunch of time specifically working on the things that are confusing. If you see a new expression and you say, I have no idea how this sentence works, deliberate practice means you spend time figuring out how that sentence works instead of ignoring it or just trying to understand the context. And so this is harder, it takes more energy. And so this is better earlier in the day, either before work or before school, if you can. And I'm gonna give you some examples of some specific exercises you can do that use deliberate practice in a few minutes. Now for practicing what you know, this is where conversations come in, okay? So we're gonna talk about how to find conversations. There's apps you can use, and I'll teach you some ways to overcome some common challenges that people face in those apps, okay? So that's gonna be good for practicing what we know. And then enjoying, this is where the passive practice fits. This is TV, music, podcasts, and these are important because they're great for when you're tired and they make this process fun. If learning English is painful and boring, then you're not going to improve. And that's why we need this. And so before I continue, I wanna see in the chat from you guys, um, where do you think you spend most of your time in English right now when you're practicing? Do you spend most of your time doing passive practice? Do you spend most of your time having conversations? Or do you spend most of your time, you think, doing deliberate practice? So Leticia says learning new things, got passive practice from Gabby, passive, passive, passive. Yeah, got a lot of passives. AJ learning new things, great. Marcelo, passive. Okay, so it looks like passive is winning. Well, it's time to expand your guys' horizons here, expand what we're doing so we can actually grow. And so bringing it back to our three steps, collect, use, and get feedback, the best place to collect is deliberate practice. And in my opinion, the best activity to collect from is what I call active listening, or you might have heard about this exercise called dictations. And so the idea with active listening is that you pick a video, you pick a podcast, anything that you find interesting, and for about 20 minutes, you push play, listen to a few words, push pause, and then try to write everything that you heard. You then repeat, try to fill in any blanks, and then keep going for 20 minutes, right? And so what this does and why it's so powerful is that, you know, if you remember that kitty cat with the new words popping up, right? When you're passive learning, they disappear. When you're doing active listening, you force your brain to pay attention to those new details. You force your brain to think about these words, try to use them, and you can ask yourself, would I actually use this in a conversation? Do I want this word in my vocabulary? Could I see myself using this? And if the answer is yes, then you add it to your collection. So if you want to collect some expressions for work, what's, what, what's a good source? Well, in my opinion, a great source is TED.com. So TED is an organization that puts on these like really interesting uh, speeches, right? There's all these speakers that come together in a city and they talk about just fascinating topics from you know, space to cryptocurrencies to the environment and of course, business. And so if you go to TED.com, you can actually filter for business and you can see a bunch of videos that will talk about not only interesting business topics, but use a lot of very good business vocabulary. And what makes this so good for the active listening exercise 
is that you get a full transcript for the entire video. So you can compare your answer at the end. You can actually interact with the transcript. So you can click on different sentences in the transcript and it will jump to the point in the video so you can hear it again. And they offer transcriptions in different languages. So you can compare the English to your native language to get a better understanding of those new expressions that you're learning. What do you guys think? Does TED seem like a, a good source? Have any of you used their site before or is it new? Got an awesome from Nancy. Got a best resource ever. Yep, Diana. Great. It's new for some people. Yeah. So I definitely recommend if you haven't used it before, go there. It's a great source for sure. Another source that you can use if you want some more help with choosing your expressions and everything is the 30 day vocabulary accelerator course that I'm putting on. And so the goal here is that I'm going to teach you 30 great business expressions in 30 days so that you can actually use them and know when to use them and how to use them so that you can stand out from the crowd. More on that in a little bit. All right, so using, we know how to collect. We wanna do deliberate practice. We wanna do some active listening. We wanna use sources like TED. How can I go about using my expressions now in a way that will help me remember them? Well, if we think back to our three ways to study, the two places we need here are deliberate practice and conversations. We need both in this case. You can think about these two things like this. Deliberate practice is like practicing an instrument by yourself at home. You're trying new songs, you're making mistakes, and you're just trying to learn as best as you can to make these songs better. A conversation is like giving a concert. So now there's a lot more pressure, right? And you have to only use your best songs or again, those words that you know really well. And so we need both types of practice because remember when I went to Madrid and I failed, well, how am I going to be good at having a conversation if I never practice having a conversation, right? So we need both. Let's look at the deliberate practice side first. How can I use expressions using deliberate practice? I recommend two different types here. There, there's more exercises than these, but these are sort of two of my favorite. One is what I call deliberate writing. And if you want a lot more information on that one, I have a YouTube video called Speaking English Isn't the Fastest Way to Improve that you can take a look at. And then another one is talking to yourself which I explain in a video called One Thing You Need to Do Every Day. And so in a, as a short summary, deliberate writing is where you spend a little bit of time writing about 100 words, and then you try to use as many of these new expressions in those 100 words. You try to correct it yourself. You compare what you wrote to an online translator like DeepL or Google Translate, and then you ask a native speaker for feedback on your writing. And I'll explain where to do that in a few minutes. But this process gives you a whole powerful cycle now. You use, you get feedback. You use, you get feedback. The other option is super easy. You can do it anywhere, anytime, for free, no tools. Just talk to yourself out loud. It can't just be in your head. It has to be out loud. And so what I like to do here is spend about 10, 15 minutes a day. I talk to myself and I take like three, four, maybe five new expressions that I'm trying to learn. And in those 10 minutes that I'm talking to myself, I try to just use as many of those three, four, five expressions as I can. And so this tells our brains that this is important. I use this thing. Please don't forget it. Okay. And you know, if you're like Chiara from Italy, she had a question for me, you know, how do I maintain my English if I don't use it a lot or don't have a lot of time? I think talking to yourself is great because again, it lets you actually use the muscles in your mouth, make the connection from your brain to your mouth. And again, signals to your brain, don't forget this stuff, I actually use it. So it's great for both helping us use new expressions and for making sure we don't forget 
old ones. Okay. Now, what about the conversation side? That's where we tend to have a lot of problems <laughs> because we're worried, we don't know people, and you know, we, we sort of get into this problem like, uh, like my friend here from India, I understand English but can't speak it. How do I fix this? Well, don't do what I did. This is what I used to think. I'm not talking to people until I'm fluent. Like literally that's what I thought for like the first <laughs> six months of my, my language learning career. And so I avoided them at all costs. So don't do that. What you do wanna do is take advantage of all the resources out there. We live in the best time in human history to learn a language, the best time. There are so many resources out there. I mean, look at us. We've got, I'm from Chicago, Gretchen's from Chicago. You guys are from Argentina and Sudan and Iran. Like we're all over the world. Could we do this even 10 years ago? Probably not. <laughs> this is incredible, incredible. So there's so many resources that we can take advantage of. Now, I know that some of you have used these apps before and your results have not been great. People don't respond to you, they don't correct you, they don't spend time with you, you can't find a good practice partner. Well, here's some advice. You're using these apps wrong. You're using them wrong. You don't wanna go into these apps looking for someone to marry. <laughs> You're not going to find one amazing person who's going to spend half an hour with you every day correcting your mistakes and teaching you the language. That person doesn't exist. And if they do, they're not free. You have to pay them and that's an English teacher, right? Like that person doesn't exist. Instead, when you use these apps, just try to have short two minute chats. That's all you need with a different person every time. Just look for a short two minute conversation where you can try to use a new expression or two and then move on to the next thing. Now, you might think, okay, great. Two minute conversation is wonderful, but nobody responds to me. <laughs> How do I get a two minute conversation when nobody responds to me? Well, you need to think about these apps like they're a numbers game, okay? A numbers game means that you need to do a lot of something so that a small percentage gives you something in return. So in this case, we're going to send a lot of invites so that a few respond. And that invite cannot be, hi, how are you? That is the worst way to start a conversation with a stranger. And that's a big reason why they don't respond to you. When you say, hi, how are you? They go, oh, another person asking me to talk to them, whatever, right? So what I recommend is to write a short little introduction like this. Hi, my name's Carlos and I'm trying to learn English so I can get a job as an engineer. Why are you trying to learn Spanish or whatever your native language is, Arabic, right? And so with that sort of two little sentence intro, you give interesting information about yourself and you invite them to give interesting information about themselves, increasing your odds of getting a response. And then this is the most important part, you copy that intro and you send it to 10 people. You just copy paste, send it to 10 people. And if you send it to 10 people, I guarantee, well, maybe I shouldn't say guarantee, but I'm pretty darn sure that you're going to get at least two, three, maybe even four people that respond to you and you can have those short two minute chats. How many of you have had more than four different English conversations in the past 24 hours? <laughs> not me, not me, not me. So you write this one paragraph, you send it to 10 people and within minutes, you can have four different conversations just like that. So that is how I recommend you use these apps, okay? So going out, doing these exercises, creating them on your own, it's all doable. It's not always easy, but if you'd prefer that I do the work for you of designing these things, then that's another reason to join me in the Vocabulary Accelerator. 
because what I do there is I design all these business specific challenges for you. And so every week we'll do things like creative writing, business speaking challenges, job interview challenges, salary negotiation challenges, and we'll put together a final real life project that will help you use everything that you learned. So in this case, it's all done for you. You just show up and learn. Talk about that in a little bit. All right, ready for the feedback step? How, how is everyone feeling so far? Is this, is this useful? Are you learning? Is it not useful? What do you think? I got a heart from Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Got a you rock from Leticia, Brenda, yes, Theo, yes, great. Thank you guys. Best class ever. Uh oh. Now I've got a high standard to live up to. <laughs> awesome. And you're improving your listening. Great. Um, I'm just curious, guys, like when you're listening to me right now, what do you think of my accent? Is it easy to understand? Is it hard to understand? What do you think? Clear, easy, excellent. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, it's a funny story. My, my, I have a wife and she and I obviously both speak English, but she has a very thick Chicago accent. <laughs> and so, you know, you, you know, you think of the words like uncomfortable, for example, or I'm, you know, unavailable. She pronounces them like on, she says, I'm comfortable. I'm unavailable. So it's even hard for people like me and Gretchen who are native speakers to understand her sometimes. So don't feel bad, <laughs> don't feel bad. All right, so feedback, where do we get feedback, right? To me, this is the most important step and it's the one that we skip most often. But let me show you how powerful it can really be. This is my good friend, Fernando, and Fernando's from Chile. Fernando moved to the United States a few years ago and he needed a job fast. The problem was that he never worked in English before. He never had a job, he never in English, he never wrote a resume for English, he never did a job interview for English. And so he asked me for help. And so what we did was we used this same three-step process. I helped him collect new expressions for these situations. We practiced using them together and then I would give him feedback on everything that he would do. You know, he'd write resumes, he'd write cover letters, and we'd keep going back and forth in this circle. Use, get feedback, use, get feedback, until he really understood how to use all these expressions. And so what happened is he went from having this problem to getting a great job as an admissions advisor at a university, making over $60,000 a year using this process. So where can you get feedback right now, today, for free? Two places that I like are High Native, and then again, apps like HelloTalk, Tandem, and those. When we're talking about HelloTalk, when, that's when you're having those short two-minute conversations. What I recommend doing is try using a new expression, and then after you use it, ask the other person, Hey, did that sound natural? Did I use that expression right? Did I use in my wheelhouse correctly, right? If that's the expression you're trying to use, does it sound professional? You can ask them for that type of feedback. High Native is a little different. And I use High Native every single day for this type of feedback. What you can do with High Native is post a question to a full community of people. And so what I would recommend you do is just think of a situation that you might encounter at your job or in your life. Maybe you're trying to respond to a job interview question. And so you write an answer, you record yourself reading it out loud, and then you submit that question or that, that, that answer to the site and you ask, hey, can you help me make this sound more natural? I'm interested in feedback on my vocab, on my pronunciation, whatever you've got. And within an hour or maybe two of posting that question, you'll have at least one, two, maybe even three native speakers that are replying to you, giving you feedback on what you just wrote and read and said. It's super powerful, it's free, highly recommend it. Again, I use it every day for my Spanish. You can use it every day for your English. 
Another place to get your get feedback from is with Gretchen and I in that vocab accelerator. And the whole idea here and the whole benefit here is that you are surrounded by native English speaking business professionals. So believe it or not, I'm not an English teacher. I was never trained to be an English teacher. I, I did not grow up being an English teacher. Gretchen's not an English teacher. What we are are business people. I'm a global director of sales at a software company, 12 years of business experience across sales, IT, and audit. Gretchen's an executive director of a nonprofit with six years of business experience in education and charity. And so when you're working with us in this accelerator, you know that the feedback you're getting is from people who live, speak, and do this stuff every day for real. And you're going to get some bonus content as well, because we're not only correcting your vocabulary, we'll give you help with pronunciation as well. So if you're like Chiara from Italy, you know, you've been mispronouncing words for a long time and nobody told, told you, we'll, we'll help you with that as well. All right, so we've talked about the three steps. Now, how about those practice routines that I promised you that you can steal? So I made three of them for you, one for when you're busy and only have 20 minutes, one for when you have about an hour, a normal amount of time, and one for when you have lots of free time, maybe on the weekend, for example. And so if you're really busy and you only have 20 minutes, I recommend a three-day cycle. On day one, you'll collect expressions using that dictation active listening technique. So you do 20 minutes and that equals about one minute of whatever the video is that you're doing it with, okay? On day two, I recommend that you have five of those two minute chats. So go into HelloTalk and try to have five two minute conversations to try to use some of these expressions. And then on day three, do the deliberate writing exercise. And by the way, I'll send you guys links at the end to any of the materials that I listed here. So if you don't know exactly what the deliberate writing technique is, I'll, I'll send you the video so you can check it out. So if you have 20 minutes, do these things, three day cycle, repeat over and over, and that'll help you use, collect, give feedback. If you have a normal amount of time, I recommend a two day cycle. On day one, you'll do the active listening dictation, you'll do the deliberate writing exercise, and then you can add in talking to yourself for a few minutes, okay? On day two, you can do some vocab review, either with flashcards or an app like Anki. And I know at the beginning of this class, I, I made fun of my vocab sheets and everything, but they are useful as long as it's not the only thing that you do. If it's the only way that you're learning, that's a problem. But if it's a part of a larger program like this, then that's why, then it's useful to help remember things that we don't wanna forget. Another cool exercise is reading out loud with an audiobook. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this, um, but what I do is I take a real book plus the audiobook version. And what I try to do is push play on the audiobook I listen to the narrator read for one sentence, I push pause, and then I read that same sentence out loud, trying to copy the pronunciation. And so this helps with pronunciation, it helps with actively using the content you're consuming, and it helps you use more of those expressions that you're trying to learn. So another great exercise. And then for the end of day two, add in five more of those short conversations. Um, Leticia asks shadowing. Yeah, shadowing. You can also do that with the audiobook too. Shadowing, if you're unfamiliar, that's where you try to read at the same time that the person is talking. And so that's a great way to sort of get used to the rhythm of a sentence in English. So you can definitely use that as well with the reading out loud exercise. Songs. So songs are a good question. Um, the, the thing with songs is that even English speakers have a hard time understanding lyrics sometimes because people don't pronounce words in a song the way that they're usually pronounced in a conversation. And so they try to make the pronunciation fit the melody and that sometimes makes it hard to understand. So I think using songs as a good way to enjoy your English is great, but I wouldn't try to like copy 
song pronunciation because then you'll sound a little weird. You'll be like, hello, my name is Kevin. I'm here to talk to you, right? Like that's not, not how you want to sound all the time. <laughs> all right. And so then if you have a full two hours, this is how I would recommend splitting it up. Do 20 minutes on a dictation, 30 minutes on deliberate writing, 10 minutes of talking to yourself, 15 minutes of reviewing vocabulary, 15 minutes of reading out loud, and then try to have 30 minutes of conversations. If you know someone who's willing to get on a Skype with you or a video call, do that for half an hour. If you don't, then use those apps like HelloTalk and have maybe five to 10 of those short two minute conversations. Okay. So let's quickly summarize what we learned. The three-step process to confidently express yourself at work is to collect, use, and get feedback. The three ways to practice that are gonna help you collect and use are deliberate practice for learning new things. And that's where practice techniques like active listening, deliberate writing, and talking to yourself are going to help. Conversations will help you practice what you know, and that's where Hello Talk and Tandem and Conversation Exchange will help. And then a great place to get feedback anytime you want is High Native. So let me pause for a second. Um, Gretchen, were there any questions that came in um, related to anything earlier that we didn't address yet? Uh, no, I think that we've addressed everything. Cool. All right. So. If you guys don't mind, uh, did I did I did I do a good job for you today? Did I did I help you learn something? Did, do you feel like these this process is going to help you? Got a superb, got a got a yes, and everything. Great. Um, and is it okay if I go ahead and tell you a little bit more about the thirty day vocabulary course? Getting a yes from Nancy. Got a very nice here. Excellent class. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Great. So. The 30-Day English Vocabulary Accelerator is designed for people who want to get a job at an English-speaking company, that want to get a promotion, that want to feel more confident in their daily life as they go through work and home life. And so my goal in this challenge, in this 30-Day Accelerator, is to teach you expressions that will help you advance your career, speak confidently, and most importantly, learn them faster so you can actually use them in a conversation. The way that we're going to do this is first through challenges. You saw I put up like the class agenda a few slides ago. And so the majority of this 30 day challenge is active practice. You're not just gonna watch a hundred videos and, and call it a day. You're going to watch a short video and then we're going to do and do and do. We're going to write, we're going to speak, we're going to use this stuff throughout these challenges. And everything you do will be corrected by a native English speaking business professional, myself, Gretchen, or anyone else that we bring in to help us. I'll also throw in four powerful deliberate practice techniques in addition to the ones we talked about today to help you learn and internalize these expressions even better. So to summarize, in the 30-day English Vocabulary Accelerator, what you'll get are two live small group classes to help you build your confidence, personalized feedback and advice on everything you do, those three business challenges every week, four to techniques to help you learn faster and that real life final project. And so if you'd like to join me in it, there are three packages that you can choose from. The live package includes everything that you see on the left, but to make sure that those live classes stay small, there's only 10 spots available. Okay, I wanna keep those classes small so you can talk as much as you can. And so there's only 10 of those. If you want that, you'll want to act fast. Interactive includes everything that you see minus the live classes, but you still learn everything. You still get personalized feedback and advice on everything you do. And then the self-study is better for people that prepare to practice by themselves. Maybe they're on a budget. Maybe they don't have a lot of time. And so that one includes everything minus the live class and the feedback, but you still learn all the expressions. You still get to do the challenges. You still get to do the techniques. 
So the full price for these things are as follows. It's 100 for live, 60 for interactive, and 20 for self-study. You can buy this now at deliberateenglish.com. If you have a phone, you can scan that QR code to, to go ahead and save your spot. Class will start on August 30th, and I offer a full money-back guarantee. I'm not here to, to steal anyone's money. If you have to change your mind, if you have to cancel at any point between now and the end of the first week of class, just send me an email and I'll send you your money back. No questions asked, not a problem. Quick question there, Kevin. Uh, someone wants to know, Lizeth, uh, will it only be business vocabulary? Great question. So what we're gonna teach are expressions that you can use at work, but that doesn't mean you can't use them at home. Right. So we're going to teach you expressions that are good for both your business and personal life, but they're, you know, they're, they're not rude. They're not, you know, slang. They're not swear words, right. That you can't use at work. So these are expressions that are going to just make you sound like a natural English speaking professional that you can also take home with you and, you know, use anywhere. A good example is remember the expression from beginning, the beginning that I keep talking about, like in my wheelhouse that works at work. And it works at home, right? So it's it goes both ways. Karen would like to know um, how she can know she's ready for business vocabulary. Sure. So it's a very simple test you can give yourself. Can you understand me right now? Can you understand what I've sent you via email? If the answer to those things are yes, then you have the right level to join this class. What else do we got? Uh, someone's asking if uh, they say they work in a call center and they would like to learn some of those idioms, um, slangs, is, is that possible? Yeah, so we will definitely cover idioms and, and slang that's appropriate for work, right? Like, so it will be expressions that, that you can use that are maybe more slang based, but it's not going to be something that you have to worry about saying in front of your boss, right? Like you'll know it's safe to use in, in both work and your personal life. And Laura's asking how many times per week are the live? So in the 30 days, there will be two live classes. So there'll be one at the end of the second week and then one at the end of the final week. Um, I see another one, will we have lifetime access? Yes, 100%. Once you sign up, you will get lifetime access to all the materials. You can go back, you can review. Uh, that'll be there for you forever. I see someone asking if it will help with everyday conversations or just um, business. And I would definitely argue both. Um, business phrases are used in everyday life too, like Kevin mentioned. Um, I guess the, the big difference is you know it's appropriate for um, something we'd say is mixed company, whether it's, it's grandma or your boss or your friends, it's all appropriate. No one will be offended. Exactly. Yep. That, that's the thing. It's like most expressions that you can use in the business world are okay for personal life. It's just not all personal life expressions are good for the business world. So we take all of the, the questions away from you. You'll know that what you're using will work in both places. And yeah, the thing is people use the expressions that we're gonna teach in everyday life all the time. Like Gretchen said earlier, run the numbers. If you guys remember that one, run the numbers. I would use that in my daily life anytime. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't have to only work in the business world. Laura, you asked um, if you don't have a new job, will the course help you feel more comfortable speaking to your colleagues who speak English in your current job? Definitely. Uh, this is something that is going to make you feel and sound like a native English speaker uh, more than you already might. It doesn't have to be a new job. Correct. Yeah. Whether you have a current job that you just want to be more comfortable in, or and I saw someone mention the call center, like you want to be able to talk to your clients more confidently and understand them better. Yes. Like that is, that's definitely going to help. Awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, if you guys are good to go, then, you know, I, I again, I really appreciate your time. Let me get my, my screen here bigger so we can see all of each other here. <laughs> uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot to me. And again, my, my goal with all of this is to really just help you guys. I, 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 that's why I'm doing this, right? Like I said, like I'm not an English teacher by trade. I'm doing this because I, I love it. 
And I, I love helping you guys. And that's really my motivation for all of it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And I hope you did learn a thing or two today. <laughs> yeah, and I'll say Kevin's really being honest. He's been talking about finding a way to help people um, as long as I've known Kevin. So this is this is something he's he's been trying to figure out for a long time. So he means it very sincerely. Very true. Thank you, Gretchen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks again for your time. It was good seeing you, and we'll talk soon.